A very common task in HTML is structuring tabular data. HTML tables were created for instances when you need to add tabular material. This is data that's arranged into rows and columns into a web page. A table is a structured set of data made up of rows and columns. A table allows you to quickly and easily look up values and indicate some kind of connection between different types of data. Tables may be used to organize schedules, product comparisons, statistics, and other types of information. In visual browsers, the arrangement of data in rows and columns can give readers an instant understanding of the relationship between the information within the data cells. In HTML, tables are created using the table tag. We then use the tr tag. This creates the table rows, and the td tag is used to create the data cells. There are a few other tags that you can incorporate into your table, but I think it's going to make the most sense if we just jump into the browser and start coding up tables. Here I have a web page and we'll start off building our tables using this HTML. This is just our basic HTML page. I have not created anything other than an H1. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll build a basic table. We're going to do this by making the table tag. The table tag is going to surround all of the material that's going to be part of the table. Then, as I mentioned, we'll need to use the tr tag, which is going to create a table row. So I'm just going to simply put tr, and then inside the tr tag, we're going to use the td tag, which allows us to create the data cells. So we'll just go ahead and call this cell 1, and let's make one additional cell. We'll call this one cell 2. If I save this page and refresh in the browser, you can see that this information is going to appear side by side. Now currently, I do not see any of the portions of the table appearing, and that's because by default, the border does not display. So currently, since we are using HTML, we're going to need to use HTML attributes in order to display the border. In order to do that, I'm going to come into my table tag, and we will add the border attribute, and we'll just set that equal to 1. If I save now and we refresh our page, you can actually now see the structure of our table. Now, if you want to create a new row, well, then you have to add a new tr tag. So if I add a new tr tag and put a td tag inside it, and we'll just call this cell 3, and then let's go ahead and add one more td tag, this will be cell 4. If we save, you can see that these new td elements, cell 3 and 4, appear within their own row. Every time you want to make a row, you're going to use the tr tag. Every time you're going to want to define a unique piece of information, you're going to use a td tag. In addition to the td tags, we also have th tags. This stands for table heading. They are usually used as the top row in your table as a heading. It is possible to use them elsewhere in the table. By default, the th tags will make the text within the tags appear as bold. So we'll just make two th tags so you can see the difference and I'm just going to type column one and column two. If we refresh you can see that this text appears bold. It is worth noting that by default the width of the table is only going to be as wide as it needs to be to hold the various content that you place within the table. Let's look at a couple of additional attributes you can see that there is spacing between the table cells. This has to do with the cell spacing. If we want to control the cell spacing, in the table tag, we will add the cell spacing attribute. If I make this equal to 5 and we save, you'll see that the spacing between the cells has now increased. If I want to decrease that and have it be collapsed, I need to actually define the cell spacing value as 0. If I define this as zero, you can see how there is no spacing between the cells. Finally, you might want to add some spacing into the cells themselves. This is controlled with an attribute called cell padding. Cell padding will increase the amount of space within the cell. So if I set the cell padding to be 5 and we refresh our page, you can now see that there's a buffer or padding in between the cell elements themselves. 
let's say instead of saying column one and column two, I just want to say my table of data and I only want to have one column appearing in this first row. If I code my table as such and we refresh the page, you can see how the table gets a little wonky. By default, when you make tables, the number of cells, whether they be the table header or the table data elements that are creating essentially the columns, if they do not match up, you're going to get unexpected results. Luckily, there is a way for us to work around that, and that is using something called column span or row span. So in this case, I want this th tag to span across two data cells. I will use a column span to accomplish this. I'm going to go to the th tag and we will add a call span equals and then how many cells do we want it to span? In this case, two. So I'm going to type two. And if I refresh my page, you can now see that this first table cell spans both columns. So it is actually now taking up one column width of information while my other two rows are taking up the two columns. Using column span will allow you to merge one or more columns into a single column. Similarly, we can use row span to do the same thing and merge rows into one or more columns. Let's practice by making a table that is just slightly more complex than this one. I'm going to use my HR tag to create a separator between the first table that we built and the second one that I'm going to be working on. Then I'll go ahead and create the table tag. And inside the table tag, I'm going to use something called T head. It is possible to divide a table into three portions, the header, the body, and a foot. The head and the foot are rather similar to headers and footers in word processing documents. They will remain the same usually on every page. The body is the main content container of the table. So when we create a T head, it's to create a separate table header. I'll go ahead and create my T head tag. And then inside the T head tag, we're just going to build a TR as we did before, which will contain a TD. And we'll make a table about fruits and vegetables. I'm going to go ahead and type fruits and veggies for this first element. If we save and refresh, you can once again see that the text is going to appear on the page. Now, because I never turned on the border, we're not going to see the outlines of the table. Let's go ahead and do that so we can have a visual representation of what is going on. I'll make the border for this table too. In addition, I'm going to have the cell spacing be zero and the cell padding be four. Now you can see I have one cell and it's going to appear within my table. The next thing that I'm going to do, and this is a little weird, but I'm going to create the T foot. The T foot has to come immediately after the T head and before the T body. So after my T head, I'm going to create something called T foot. And the T foot is once again going to contain a TR tag, a table row, and we will create a TD tag. And our TD tag is just going to say copyright 2021 food. And if we refresh the browser, you can see this information displaying. Now I'm ready to actually move on to my T body section. So after the T foot, I'll make the T body and inside the T body, we're going to use a TR tag. This TR tag is going to contain a TH and this will be our fruit header. So this is going to be the headline that is going to display information about fruit. After the TR tag, I'm going to make another TR tag. And this is going to contain a list of various fruits. So I'm going to actually make a couple of TDs here. Let's maybe make five that simply list a variety of fruits. Now, if we save and refresh, you can see that once again, our table is getting all wonky. And that has to do with the fact that we have one row that has five cells or five columns. The rest of the rows aren't sure what to do. I'm going to come into the other TD and TH tags that we've made, and I will add a call span. The amount that I want to column span is going to be five. So we'll add the call span five to the TD that's within the T foot. In addition, we'll add it to the TD within the T head. And finally, we're going to add it to our very first T body cell, which is this TH, and we're going to have this column span five as well. 
Now when I save and refresh, you can see that the table itself looks a little bit different. As you can see, the fruit term is bold and it's centered. This is a result of this being a th tag. By default, th will not only bold the text, but it will also center it. Let's move on and make some more cells. I'm going to create another row that has additional fruits. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our next tr tag. This is going to contain a table header, and this is where we will start to define our veggies. Since this particular row is only going to contain one cell, I need to add my call span and we'll set that to five. Now I'll move on and I'll make the next row, which is simply going to contain TD tags, and this will be a list of vegetables. I'll save my table, and if we refresh, you can now get a visual of what this code has generated in the browser. This gives you an idea of some of the basics about building tables. We will continue looking at tables in the next lecture, and we will build a little bit more complexity into our tables.